Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of my how to clone a hard drive with bad sectors using DD Rescue video. So, as you can see, we are now booted into Linux, or more accurately, a team viewer connected into a computer that is booted from Linux because my screen recording software doesn't work natively in Linux. Uh, so yeah, whenever you uh, get booted into Linux, you, you, it may look different depending on the variant you're using. There's different uh, graphical user interfaces uh, for Linux, but this is using the Parrot version that I showed to download in the previous video. Uh, so as we get into Linux, first thing we're going to want to do once we're booted up into Linux is go ahead and just look for our terminal emulator or terminal. Uh, very often you're going to find an icon somewhere hidden, looks something like this and we're going to get into a terminal. So this one has one called Parrot Terminal. And generally speaking, everything else we're going to do is going to be carried out in this terminal window. So first thing we're going to want to do is update the repositories of our um, Linux installation. So to do that, first thing we're going to want to do is we're just going to type sudo, which is, to, is for the super user to do. So super do. If you don't type that, you're probably going to get an error because it's not going to be able to do it as the super user, which is required for a lot of the under the hood things. So you're going to notice almost every command we're going to do here, we're going to just type sudo before it. More often than not, it never hurts to type the sudo. Uh, virtually all of the live USB variants are going to have the sudo command enabled. So super do, type a space, and then for Debian versions, we're going to use this apt-get. So this is for it to install anything, to update anything, and then we're just going to use update. Now it's important to use update rather than upgrade. If you use upgrade, it's going to try to upgrade the entire operating system and you can be stuck sitting for hours while it downloads gigabytes and gigabytes of data. But update is just going to go and look for the latest repositories of programs that could be installed. If you skip this step, you might try to do some of the later steps and you're going to get an error that it doesn't recognize or know what that program is. So just go ahead and do the update. And you're going to notice it's going to go through and download from different sources. And what this is doing is just getting the latest list of uh, source codes of programs that can be installed to run in your live USB. So we'll just give this a moment to finish up, and then we'll proceed to the next step. Okay, so we finished up installing the update, running the update, I should say. So now we're just going to want to install a couple of programs. So first I'm going to install a program that just allows us to uh, take a look at the hardware so we can find which drives we want to clone to and from, just make it easy. So I like to use this one, I'll do sudo apt-get install this time, you can type right. And then we're going to put in hw info. So what we're doing now is we're uh, telling Linux to, as the super user, to use the apt-get command, install program named hw info. So go ahead and run that. It's going to ask if you are okay with using an extra three and a half gigabyte, uh, megabytes of data. Just go ahead and press Y, enter, and it'll go ahead and download and install that package. Now what this is installing, and uh, it may go through and take a little time to install some uh, dependency packages and other things. So now if I were to run that hw info command, which may or may not work without the sudo command, but I'll try it. Uh, what it's going to do, it's going to analyze this computer and tell us every bit of details about the hardware connected to this computer. It's a ton of information, as you can see. We can scroll through pages and pages and pages of it. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to get a simplified list of just what we need to see later. And the next one we want to install is actually uh, DD Rescue. So again, sudo apt at install. And this time we're going to want to use G DD Rescue. Now it might work if you forget the G, but there's different variants of DD Rescue. And the one that we want is called GNU DD Rescue. So you have to put the G in front of it. So make sure you type that. It's sudo apt get install G DD Rescue. That's the correct version that you want. Might get an update saying space, and it actually didn't this time. So it looks like that completed. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is actually to identify which drives we want to copy data to and which drive we want to copy data 
from. And we're going to want to write those down, what we call our source and our destination. Our source is our hard drive or USB drive or whatever that we're going to be reading the data from. Destination is what we're going to be writing the data to. Now it's important to note, your destination is going to be overwritten. So use a blank device or a device that you don't care about losing everything on it. Just assume your destination drive is going to be duked. It's not going to just copy files from one and merge them with the other. It's going to overwrite your destination. So that's important. Your destination needs to be a blank drive that you are okay with overwriting. So let's identify the drive. So I'm going to use that HW info command again. And this time I'm just going to add the trigger short. And what that's going to do for us is it's going to generate a much shorter list of computer specs for us. Now if we scroll up, we're going to find eventually our actual storage devices. So now as we can see here, we see disks and partition. Now you're going to notice Linux doesn't use C drive and D drive like Windows does, but instead it's going to use these DEV. Now we notice this first one here is an, N is an NVMe device, which that would be the SSD. We're actually uh, booted up currently on a Toshiba or HP NV, which uses a Toshiba SSD in it. So as we can see here, it sees this Toshiba SSD controller. That's the actual boot device of this laptop that we have booted into Linux. We're going to want to leave that completely alone. We don't want to mess with that. You know, if, unless that was the drive we were going to rescue from, then we'd want to write down this here, the NVMe 0N1. So if that was the one we wanted to rescue, go ahead and write that down. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use our USB drive that we created for this Parrot Linux installation. And I'm going to use that as our source. So I'm going to write down that our source drive, which is actually this one here, the SanDisk Cruiser. That's our actual Linux image that we're working from. So I'm going to write that down as source. I'm writing this on a piece of paper right now. And I'm going to type right forward slash DEV forward slash S D A. Okay, so that's my source. And then I'm going to go ahead and write down my destination, which is this blank USB device here, which is SDB. So destination DEV. S D B. Okay, that's pretty easy to remember. I'm reading from S D A, writing to S D B. So there are storage devices. Now you're gonna also notice some different partitions. This could be helpful in identifying which drive is which. So notice that it's the same S D B, but then it designates one, two, and three. That's how I know that that's our uh, one that's actually uh, the sorry S D A has a. One and two, which is typical of a Linux boot USB, it's going to have a couple of partitions, whereas the SDB, that's just a fat formatted USB drive that I plugged in here as a destination. So now we get to actually typing the command. So I'm going to go ahead and just open a fresh terminal window here. It's out of our way. Now there's a few things we need to understand about using our DD rescue command. There's a lot of different triggers and functions that we can use in DD Rescue to modify how it reads data. So the first thing we need to do is to actually in initiate the DD Rescue command. So again, I'm going to do the sudo, super do. If you don't type sudo, you're not going to have block level access to the storage. So without doing it as the super user, you're just going to get a, an error spitting out. You're not going to get anywhere. Then we're going to type our command, which in this case is DD Rescue. Even though we had the G when we installed it, that's just to designate which variant of DD Rescue we're installing. But once it comes time to actually execute it, you just type in DD Rescue. And the next part is one of the trickier parts. This is where we put in the different triggers. Now, what these triggers are is different commands we could throw in there that will modify the uh, way that DD Rescue tries to read the data. So you can change all kinds of parameter in here. You can change the number of retries. You can change the block size that it uses for reading. You can do all kinds of different things to modify it. We, we don't need a ton of those. Um, but generally speaking, for reading a hard drive with bad sectors, most of the default settings are going to work okay. Now, a few that we need to be aware of. Uh, the first one here is the dash F trigger. 
Now, the reason this dash F trigger is often going to be necessary is if we're writing the data directly to a block storage device. So, if, for example, if you were going to write it to an image file that, say, you were going to save on your desktop, well, then you wouldn't need the, def, the dash F trigger, which is the, or the force trigger. Now, you could, you could type this either way. You could type it as dash dash F-O-R-C-E, um, or just the easier way, single dash and F, that tells it to force the imaging process, which is always going to be necessary if you're writing directly from one hard drive to another hard drive or one block storage device like a USB drive directly to another block storage device rather than imaging to a file. If you're imaging, if your destination is a file, then you don't need this dash F. Uh, some other ones, uh, there's the dash D trigger, uh, which is according to the documentation says it allows direct access. It's usually not necessary, but once in a while I've found that it does make certain errors go away. So if you're not getting any errors, you probably don't need the dash D, uh, but you could use it in certain cases if you're having issues with it. Uh, but a lot of times you may also even get an error if you do use it saying that your system doesn't support this type of direct access. So default to leaving that off, but it's there if you need it. The next one is the dash capital R. Now one thing to note about Linux, unlike Windows and other environments, is everything is case sensitive. So if you had a, a folder that was uh, users with a capital U, that could be an entirely different folder than users with a lowercase u. So you have to be aware that everything is case sensitive, including these triggers. So if I were to change this to a capital F, it's not going to be the same function. In fact, it might just spit out an error that, that that's an invalid trigger. So make sure we follow the casing. The capital R is to clone in reverse. Now this is handy for a hard drive that perhaps has a big cluster of bad sectors in one region, but before and after that region, the data is mostly good. So what you could do is perhaps image it without the dash R in the beginning, let it get up to the area where it's hitting a lot of errors and really struggling and not getting any further, then pause it, restart it, and this time throw in the dash R trigger and let it clone from the very back of the drive all the way back up to it. So you're going to kind of clone in opposite directions. You read from the beginning of the drive to the bad spot, then from the end of the drive backwards to the bad spot, hopefully getting the majority of the data around that bad spot. So it can be a very useful trigger, but for your first pass, you're generally going to want to leave it off. So initially, you want to read it from beginning to end. It's going to be a whole lot faster than reading in reverse, but that reverse is there for certain cases where you may want to spin it around backwards and now read in reverse. Uh, there's other commands too, such as the lowercase r, which is the number of retries. So for example, you could throw a three in there and tell it to try each sector three times. Uh, but again, for your first pass, most often you're not going to want to use this. Just let it try once and move on. There's pretty good skipping algorithms built into this. So when it hits an error, it's going to jump a certain amount of blocks ahead, try to read backwards on the next pass. Then later it's going to split those bad sections and read from the middle toward both ends. and the algorithm is quite good on its own, so very often you, you don't really want to do too much with that. So if you're interested in more of those triggers, you can find the documentation on the GNU DD Rescue uh, documentation files. I'll throw a link in the, in the comments down below so you can see where those triggers are if you're interested. Uh, there's quite a few others. Some you might want to use for specific use cases, such as optical media where reading at the same exact block size that the optical media uses could be advantageous over using a default block size that the program's gonna try to use. Uh, so there's quite a few different triggers we can use, but for this first pass, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with nothing but the dash F trigger, just the force trigger, uh, because I know I'm going from one USB drive to another USB drive. I don't happen to have a hard drive with bad sectors handy, so I, I'm just using this for demonstration purposes, working from my laptop here at home remote desktop into my wife's laptop. So, uh, but I'm using USB, as I told you not to do in the previous video. Again, if you're actually trying to rescue data from a hard drive with bad sectors, you really are going to want to direct SATA connect to your hard drive, uh, but you'll still see those same types of paths, that same uh, SD, the DEV, SDB, SDA type of designation. Those are your actual hard drive uh, device ID. All right, so next we want to type in our source. Now this is again where you want to be very careful not to get confused. If you're, if you're using a blank destination and you clone the opposite direction, you're going to clone zeros or blank data 
over your good data. And this is a situation where your data will be permanently lost if you do this the wrong way. So triple, quadruple, quintuple, however many times you need to check this command before you send it, please be sure they are in the correct order. So first is our source. So this is where we're going to read data from. So now I know I want to read data from this SanDisk cruiser, which is DEVSDA. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that path in, DEVSDA, followed by a space. So there's our source. That's where we're going to read data from. Next, we want our destination, which I'm going to use this vendor code generic USB drive for our destination. So VSDB. Now, if you were cloning just a certain partition, let's say you didn't need uh, the whole drive, you know there's two partitions, one's perhaps much larger, and you don't want to bother to clone that, you could put the partition number here. So say we only wanted to clone the second partition, well, which is this partition here, you could enter that number there. But again, you just want to be aware that if you're cloning a partition to the root device, uh, you could cause some issues there because obviously you're not going to have a, a a partition table because you're going to have the very beginning of the partition where the partition table should be. Uh, but you could go partition to partition. So for example, if there was only one partition on this, uh, we could go ahead and throw a, a one there. So this would clone the second partition of this device onto the first partition of that device. But generally speaking, I, I found that, that you're going to cause more problems and confusion if you do that. So if you have a blank device, just go full device to full device you know, SDA to SDB, forget the partitions. This way we're just doing an entire clone, partition table, and everything from one device to the other. Now comes an important part that so many people skip, the log file. Now the name will confuse you because they say, well, it's the log file. How, how important could a log file be? Well, this log file is not just a log file. This is more than just you know, some logging for diagnostics later. This log file is actually how DD Rescue keeps track of the data that is and isn't recovered. So it actually contains a, a listing of sector ranges that either were or weren't read or were skipped or are pending rereads. So this is how the program keeps track of what is and isn't read. So the log file is absolutely essential to use if you expect any problems. If you're just cloning a perfectly healthy drive onto another perfectly healthy drive, you don't expect any issues. You could probably skip it. But if you're watching this video, you're probably trying to clone something with bad sectors. So you are definitely going to want to use a log file. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just create a log file on the desktop. So uh, let's see if I remember how the uh, file system here works on this one. Home, uh, users. Now, if you're unsure of, of a path, uh, if you start to type it and press tab on Linux, it'll autofill what it thinks you're going to use. Um, thinking parrot, oh, I don't know what the user is. Let's go ahead and gonna open up a file browser if I can get my path here. Oh, it's just user. Okay, let's try let's try that. Home user desktop. I think this one just has Okay. So we're just home user desktop. It didn't actually put the folder name in. I guess that's how this new live version is working. And then we want to create a name. So I'm just gonna call it log one dot log. So we should see that file appear on our desktop if we are in the correct user account here. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and have that created. And what that's going to do is keep track of where we read, where we leave off. So when we're ready, we double check that SDA is the correct first device and SDB is the correct destination device that we're okay with overriding. And we can go ahead and press the enter or return key and let DD Rescue execute. Now it's important before you execute this, just in case you notice a mistake or something, control Z 
is how to pause or stop this once you've started. So you may want to have your hand ready on that just in case you know you, you see something going on or you hear some clicking noises and you just say, well, let's abort real quick. Control Z is your option to end this. So I'm going to go ahead and press return and let's see what spits out. All right, so right away, we notice a log file appeared on our desktop. And as we can see, it's now going to work rescuing data. So we're going to notice some numbers here. We see percent rescued. Now, obviously, that's banging away pretty quick because this is just copying one USB drive to another. Uh, you can see the in position. That's the current position where it's reading data, as well as the out position, which is the current position where it's writing data. You can see how much data has yet to be attempted. We can see how much has already been read. And then you're going to see over here, this is kind of where your errors are going to happen. So we're not seeing any errors, but you're going to see some. Perhaps you're going to register as non-trimmed. That means it hit an error, skipped, but hasn't come back to retry that area. Non-scraped, that's going to be another pass where it's going to, after it's gone through the first pass of trying to split the area, it's going to try to read it even more. Bad sectors, that's going to be sectors it just totally gave up on. Bad areas, that's the number of areas where it skipped over that it has just given up totally on that and other read errors. So this, as you see these fill up, it's going to kind of tell you the condition of your hard drive as those non-trim, non-scrape, bad sector areas fail. Uh, so we see we're at 3.14% and counting. Uh, if I go ahead and press Control Z here, go ahead and your destination, plug it back in, that can unfreeze. So anyway, so we're paused now, as we can see. But now let's say we want to resume the command, right? We only got 3.14% rescued, but we want to keep rescuing and try to get all this data. If you simply press, once you're back in your terminal, press the up arrow on your keyboard, you'll notice it'll autofill the exact same command that we just had. Now, if I just go ahead and press enter, it's just going to resume right where it left off and going at the same as it was. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control Z and pause it. But now let's say we've already run the first pass but we hit an error, it's just not getting through. It's just problem after problem after problem. We're just not getting past this area of bad sectors and it's taking a huge amount of time. Well, this is where now we might take, go back in here and next to our dash F, we could go another space, dash R to run in reverse. Make sure you spaces. And if I go ahead and execute this, it's going to now begin reading only in reverse order. Now, I'm not actually going to do this because I know if I do, it's going to give me an error because my source, my source drive is actually larger than my destination. I didn't have two thumb drives the same size handy. So I know if I try cloning this, it's going to fail because if it gets to the last sector of the source, well, it's going to be a higher number than the last sector of the destination. So it's not going to work if I try this in reverse. But this is a basic guide to how DD Rescue works. Uh, you'll notice if you open up your log file, uh, you're going to see here is actually where it's keeping track of the areas that have been read and haven't been read. So you see these positions, size, so, you know, it's, it's read starting at position this, this is how much of it has read, and then there's a status of question mark, which probably means it doesn't know where it's left off of it's read that much. So it doesn't know the status of anything past that point. So you can see this logging here is uh, keeping track of things that the program can then use to continue to resume and read data. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this run for a little bit with the dash F command. So I really hope this is helpful to you. Uh, if you have a problem with a hard drive that has bad sectors, by all means give this program a try, uh, assuming that you can afford to risk the very real possibility that data could get lost if you're not careful. Uh, this program is very helpful. Uh, I've seen many cases where it could uh, scrape a great amount of data, uh, short of having a hardware imaging device, something like DeepSpark Disk Imager or PC3000. Uh, this is definitely one of the best options for cloning data of drives that have bad sectors and areas that just aren't reading well that are causing drive instability. The great thing about Linux, it's not going to go unstable just because of a few bad sectors. The operating system isn't going to hang like Windows is. Uh, it's just going to be able to sit here and go ahead and muscle through. If you do get a hang, it's probably because you did something stupid like I just did with uh, mounting the drive and, and trying to use it as a destination for the data, but nothing uh, unplugging and plugging back in wasn't able to resolve. So, uh, but yeah, it's much better than Windows. In my next video, if you have the chance to watch it, I'm going to show how to use a little more full featured program, a program called HDD Super Clone. Uh, that program is 
Uh, a little more full featured than DD Rescue. It's a newcomer on the block, didn't exist when I first wrote the tutorial on DD Rescue, uh, but it's a really full featured tool. There's even a pro version which is for sale, although uh, here the developer might be going open source with that in the pro version, so we'll want to stay posted on that. But in my next video, I'm going to show another Linux tool, the HDD Super Clone, how you can install that in Linux and how you can use that to clone a hard drive that has bad sectors and other. So thanks for watching, guys. Again, this is Jared with Data Medics, or professional data recovery services company. If you have any uh, questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to us. Visit our homepage, data-medics.com, and be sure to check out our forum where you can discuss your data recovery case with professionals in the data recovery field from around the world. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.